G'day everyone, welcome to Kids Church. It's week five of term two for Online Kids Church. We've got a great lineup of things for you today. We're gonna be doing singing, Bible verse, um, prayer, a talk, craft, a bunch of other stuff. And we've even got the Latrell girls doing uh, our Bible verse to let it go. So that's something to be able to look out for. We've been learning over the last couple of weeks about God's big story. And we're learning about how God is working all the way through the Bible to bring us into relationship with him once more. We learned in the first week about the pattern of the kingdom, how it was really, really great. God's people were in God's place and everything was good. But in our second week, we learned that things went bad. Sin entered the world and the perish kingdom came. And because of that, we couldn't be in God's place. But we've learned over the last three, two weeks, and this week included, how God has been working to be able to bring us back into relationship with him. God gave promises to Abraham, and also last week we learned that God chose Israel to be his own very special people. And God was gonna make them a kingdom of priests to be able to serve the world. This week we're looking at King David and the promise that God gave to King David about a king forever. Keep watching and find out a little bit more. We're gonna start by singing. We're gonna sing the greatest party. So everyone get up on your feet and let's get going. Hey guys, my name is Ben. I'm one of the leaders down at Heathcote. And today I'm gonna to be taking you through the memory verse, which I imagine a lot of you guys are getting pretty good at. Uh, so if you think back to last week, you might remember Ian taking you through it in Greek, which would have been pretty tricky. But today, I think we're gonna try and take it up a notch. So I'm gonna give you guys some challenges and I wanna see if you can say the memory verse while you do these challenges, all right? So we'll go through it once together and then we'll get into them, all right? So the memory verse goes, Christ says yes to all of God's promises. That's why we have Christ to say amen for us to the glory of God. 2 Corinthians 1.20. All right, so for the first challenge, we're gonna try and say the memory verse while we're balancing on one leg, all right? So let's give it a go. 
Christ says yes to all of God's promises. That's why we have Christ to say amen for us to the glory of God. 2 Corinthians 1.20 <laughs> Alright, now for the next challenge, we're going to try and still balance on one leg, but try and do it with our eyes closed. Alright, I'll do it with you again. Ready? Christ says yes to all of God's promises. That's why we have Christ to say our men for us to the glory of God. 2 Corinthians 1.20 Alright, now we're going to try and pat our heads and rub our tummies at the same time while we're saying the memory verse, alright? So, Christ says yes to all of God's promises. That's why we have Christ to say amen for us to the glory of God. 2 Corinthians 1.20 Okay, now for the last challenge, we're going to put all of them together. So I want you to try and balance on one leg with your eyes closed and pat your head and rub your tummy while we say the memory verse, all right? It's gonna be pretty tricky, but let's see how we go. Right. Christ says yes to all of God's promises. That's why we have Christ to say amen for us to the glory of God. 2 Corinthians 1. Hey kids, it's Michael here. Hope you've all been having an awesome week and happy birthday if it's been your birthday in the last week. So this term in Kids Church Online, we've been hearing all about God's big story. We've been learning how God's big story in the Bible is all about Jesus. We've seen through Abraham and Moses that God makes big promises for his people. He promises to make them into a big kingdom. God's kingdom is his people living in his place under his rule. But at this point in the Bible, we don't have the full picture yet. We don't have the full picture about what this kingdom will look like. So we get to the book of the Bible called 2 Samuel. And a great king of God's kingdom has been chosen. And his name is David. Now David was special because he was a king that God chose to rule his people, Israel, in the land of Canaan. One day, God uses his prophet Nathan to make some big promises to David. God says that he has chosen David's kingdom to be made great. God says that after David dies, someone in his family will become a great king who would be close with God, so close that he would be able to call God his father, and God would be able to call him his son who he would love forever. This is pretty amazing already, but it doesn't stop here. The king that God would choose wouldn't just have a kingdom that would rule for a few days, weeks, months, years, God's king would rule forever. God's king would rule forever and ever. God's kingdom is his people living in his place under his rule forever. But what kind of king could rule forever? Don't kings eventually die and their kingdoms get taken over by other kings who also die? No kingdom on earth has ever been able to rule forever. But God wouldn't choose just any king. He would choose a king that could rule forever. His son Jesus came into the world to be this king, saying, the time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. God would say to Jesus, you are my son, who I love. When Jesus died, he wouldn't stay dead. He would rise and to rule the kingdom of God from heaven forever. So what does this mean for us? It means that Jesus is our king. 
He's our King who rules us today, tomorrow, and every day into forever. He's the King that God loves, and who loves us as God's people. And he wants everyone to be a part of his kingdom. When things look out of control, we know that Jesus is God's King and that he's in control as God's forever King. One day we know that he will bring us into heaven to be his people living in his place under his rule forever. G'day guys, my name is Jack and I'm going to be praying for us today. Um, if you'd like to join me by bowing your head and if you agree with what I say, uh, say amen at the end. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that we can continue to teach everyone about the good news of the Bible, even through these tough times being stuck at home. We thank you for Jesus that you willingly sent your son to die for us so we can be saved and have eternal life in heaven with you. Thank you that Jesus is the king that lives forever and that he loves us. Thank you, Jesus, that you fulfill all of God's promises and that we can trust you when things get difficult. We pray that we can continue to encourage others to turn to God, whether we're at school or out having fun with our mates. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Colin Buchanan. There. Whee! Well, they're in the judge's hands. I'm starving. Okay, so today uh, we learned about how God 
um, gave a place to his people and he gave them a king to be over them, uh, King David, and all his sons were kings as well. So today we're going to make a crown to remember the good blessing that God gave his people of a king and a place to live. So to make our crown, we're first going to need some paper. You can get white paper like I have, or you can use some colored paper. And we're going to fold our paper in half. The other things you're going to need today is some decorations for our crown. So I've got some little beads. Turn it over, you can see little colored beads. And I've got some stars and I've also got some stickers and some textures and glitter glue. That's up to you guys what you decide to use and you'll also need some glue if you're sticking things on. You can use whatever you'd like to decorate your crown. Okay, so we've folded our piece of paper in half. Now we're going to get our scissors. We're going to cut, cut, cut. Okay, and then we're going to get our crown. We're going to fold it in half again. And then we're going to cut the little bits of our crown. So to do that, we want to cut some triangles. You can draw the triangles first if you'd like. So to do a triangle, we cut one this way, like our diagonal. And then we cut this way again, a diagonal like that. And you keep doing that the whole way across. And it should look something like that. Leave our tape there and we want to decorate it. So we're going to get texture and we're going to write one thing on one side and one thing on the other. So on the first side, we're going to write David was God's king, because that's what we learned today. And then on the other side, we want to write, so you flip it over, we're going to write Jesus is king forever. got both those sides of our crown and then we're going to decorate it with our little bits and pieces so I'm going to add some stickers these ones have got Jesus on them and then I'm going to get some of my little pieces my little love hearts I'm gonna stick them on And then once it's dry, you can stick it together and there's your completed crown. David was God's king. Jesus is king forever. You can wear that and remember what you learnt today. Okay, bye kids.